Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Punting Pioneer. I'm Corbin Hostler, as always, with Cool Stuff Inc., and this is Mono Blue Tempo. So, this is a deck I come back to every now and then. I actually looked, it's been almost a year since I've recorded with this last, uh, and that was actually kind of a different deck. That was a Mono Blue Devotion type deck. And what we've seen in Pioneer is that the format, despite bans and moving forward and ch the changes it has gone through, um, this is a, a strategy that can still have success, but you have to play it a little differently than you did back then when you could really go wide with the Devotion. Instead, you have to be a lot more interactive, and that's what you'll see in this version here of Mono Blue Tempo, one of my favorite uh, decks in the format that I just always try to make work. So every time I see a new version, I just always want to record with it. And most of the time, I hold myself back, but this one looks great. So instead of being this Devotion theme, it's almost a Mono Blue Control deck. So to speak, it's really weird, and that's what makes it neat. But uh, So we do have these one-drop creatures, your Siren Storm Tamers, Spectral Sailors, even a Cloud Fin Raptor here, uh, to put the Curious Obsessions on, right? That's what you'll recognize from almost any mono blue deck in these formats. However, outside of that, you see some stuff you don't necessarily expect, right? Four Unsubstantiates in the main deck, Essence Captures, Spell Pierces in the main deck, Disputes in the main deck, this is a deck made to counterspell things more so than just go wide. You know, you don't want to go one drop devotion, two drop devotion, three drop devotion, four drop master of ways in this deck. Although we are still running a few master of ways. And of course we have our Tempest Shins here. But this is fundamentally a different deck in the way it operates. It can operate at instant speed a lot. The Seed Asher Octopuses, of course, have Flash. It's going to be a fun one. I think I'm looking forward to playing it. We even get to have a little fun with the Glass Pool Mimic here is a land the sideboard pretty straightforward uh gadwick for you know the control matchups and trancing melody when you want to take something the fourth dispute for ether gus i mean i don't know if it's good or or bad for the gameplay of magic but the whole four dispute for ether gus somewhere in the 75 thing if you're playing blue has really become sort of de facto in uh historic and pioneer and so as expected we have them here you just have to and then Damping Sphere, Soul Guide, Lantern cover most of your combo bases in Pioneer, while Anul, countering Artifact or Enchantment spells, can come in handy as well. So everybody, Mono Blue Tempo here in Pioneer. It is a format that I think is probably in need of another shakeup at some point in time. Uh, there's not a ton of sort of uh, fringe decks. I don't love uh, the diversity sort of below the top level. Um, but you know what? We're trying, and that's what we're doing here with Mono Blue Tempo, trying to see if now is a good time for this to attack the meta, if we can uh, take the, the threats in this meta and adapt this deck to fight them. So that's what we're going to figure out here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's jump into the games. Well, we're on the draw, but this looks like a keeper to me. A land, a castle, an opt. Um, I mean, double um substantiate can be pretty medium, I have to say, but... Uh, hopefully, you know, the, the Sea Dash or Octopus, uh, and the Opt can go a long way here. We want to either find a one drop or barring that, at least find a two drop here, right? So we can opt on the incept, play two drop, and then on turn three, maybe have up on Substantiate plus Curious Obsession. Our opponent on Mono Green, however, Mono Green without a one drop, that is, uh, I mean, that's huge, <laughs> right? That's a, that is a very big part of playing against the mono greens whether or not they have those one drop accelerations so um plenty of islands for us unfortunately nothing to mutate this sea dash or octopus onto but not a ton of pressure from our opponent right frankly we can unsubstantiate uh anything too scary here whether it's a something like you know a yorvo um we can unsubstantiate that we don't take that much damage and then we can play a, a tempest gen and start progressing our game that way. We can throw the Curious Obsession on what will be a 4-4 and then a 5-5 uh, five, five Tempest Gin. That's four swings. That'll get the job done pretty quickly. We also have the Octopus. Hopefully we don't get too blown out by the Collected Company. That was I was just thinking how well we were doing on Tempo with our Mono Blue Tempo deck. Well, Collected Company is Green Tempo, and they did very, very, very well. So, how do we race now? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well. You know. Yep. 
think I'm going to go for the Obsession here. It's more man efficient to use a seed Asher Octopus since we think we're going to need to um, substantiate here. However, I need to deal five. I need to be able to kill him uh, in four hits. Although maybe we may have possible. Let's see what we hit though. Well, Spell Pierce, you would have been slightly more useful last turn, but it's not the end of the world here. I think I do this now. I'm just going to unsubstantiate that thing now and see if my opponent gets baited into going for another collected company, which we can Spell Pierce. If they just simply replay that creature, well... It's going to hurt, right? We're going to take seven uh, damage at that point. But if instead they go for another collected company, they greed a little bit, we would have got paid off. Not quite. Didn't quite work out, but this is going to be, this one's going to be rough. We need some blockers. I mean, mass serve waves look pretty good here, right? I mean, I guess Clawfin Raptor is not the end of the world. I'm just trying to make chump blockers, frankly, and, and swing and survive. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to swing with the Tempest Shin. Definitely missing the Merfolk Tricksters in this one. You know, Merfolk Trickster looks a lot better than a Spell Pierce or a uh, an Essence Capture would here. So this is, you're seeing kind of one of the downsides of this build of the deck. But on the upside, you know, it, it matches up better against a lot of other decks in the format. And it's we're still live in this one, right? Double the spell pierces, huh? Okay. All right, well, let's pass. I can flash in the Sea Dasher Octopus as a 2 2. The Cloudfin Raptor can chump the Ronus, and then I can actually trade with the Scoos. I wonder if I could. Okay, here's how we win. Well, maybe not because of the Scoos. Hmm. There's a lot. To think about here, my opponent may also opt to do something with these Hashep Oasis with the with the Nykvos, They can uh, they can turn three lands into one, two, three, four, five mana. They're just going for the Harbinger. Okay, I think that's probably good for us. What I'd really like to see is them tap out of green mana. That's uh, or at least tap that forest. Is it too much to ask for them to just tap the forest, please? Because truthfully, the way we win is, ah, gosh, all right. It would have been to play the Sea Dasher Octopus, evolve this to a 1-2, chump block with the Sea Dasher. This is a 1-2, this is a 6-5. Next turn, we, I, I guess we would hope to draw an island, turn it into a uh, 7. Would we have lethal, and then we'd have lethal maybe? Maybe not. So maybe let's think this through then. How in the heck do I get two turns out of this? I just mutate onto this thing. I don't know how mutating works with mute. Evolving works with mutating. This is only 10. This isn't lethal. Although I guess it is, huh? Because they can give... Plus Suo and Trample. So are we just dead no matter what? Even if I put four Toughness, say, in front of this thing, and then Trample's over for three, eight, ten. Well, I guess we're not dead. Really don't see how we're going to win, though. All right, we'll cast this thing. Play draw difference, I'll tell you what, right? Look how close this one was. I think I have to make the block that gives us a chance to win the game. And if my opponent sees it, my opponent sees it. And actually, I think I miscounted anyway. So this is, would, it's not even enough. We'd have to hit an island to get to seven, eight. We'd also have to have a creature. So yeah, the spell pierces and everything. Yeah, this is a billion, billion damage. All right, on to game two. We tried, we tried. All right, Entrancing Melody seems good here. And, of course, Aether Gust seems incredible. Mystical Dispute seems not great. 
excuse me. I do like the spell pierces, given that we saw collected companies. I'm going to cut the Narset. And I'm going to cut... And I'm Substantiate here. And I guess we'll see how this does. I mean, this looks like a pretty reasonable build against a, against a green deck. So we'll give it a shot. Yeah, this is a keep. There's a Gust. There's an Op. There's a Sailor. That's the one drop. I mean, four lands is a lot, but... The opt should help us find some action, you know, ideally a um, a Sea Dash or Octopus or a Curious Obsession or what have you to, to throw on to that Spectral Sailor. Um, this hand can go places, especially it looks like our opponent's taking a mulligan. So uh, good start, good start. Gust, of course, is huge against any deck playing Yorvo right now. Our opponent is going to kind of punish us here and have the have the elves this time around so suppose that is what it is just gonna pass with the gust open here i feel like i kind of have to gust um one of the scarier three drops like for instance the seal leaf champion just because of how man efficient it is if we don't find a curious obsession with the opt and you know frankly we we could still be behind here, simply because of how dangerous, you know, just Atlanta War Elves is. But that's a good one, I think. That's a pretty good one. Our opponent put the Steel Leaf Champion on top. Now we get to Essence Capture it the second time around. They're only going to have two cards in hand after that. And we grew our Spectre Sailor. Living the dream. All right, one card left. What could it be? Well, we got plenty of lands over here. <laughs> I mean, if it's something good, it's going to get us because they now have access to all the mana and we have nothing. Imagine if they just drew, like, say, Vivian Monster's Advocate out of the sideboard or something, just made a reach uh, creature, a reach 3-3. Three, three. I would scoop this game so fast. Uh, instead, though, it's a collected company, and, well, let's see how bad it is. Well, they're thinking about it, which I would assume is very bad for us. Yeah, that's, that's 10 power. That is pretty bad. All right, let's activate the Sailor. That's what we needed last turn. We just flooded out pretty hard here. Although, I have to say, Unsubstantiate might give us a shot. The problem is this puts them to 14. We have to survive so many turns here. But it is possible. You know, the other Spectral Sailor can even jump in the way and chump block. I guess for what it's worth, the Tempest Gen trades. Um, well, that spell can't be countered. That's true. However... I can return it to your hand. Shifting Ceratops supposed to be pretty good against Mono Blue at hitting the battlefield, uh, but not in this case. That keeps it from, from growing the Yorvo. Are they really going to be greedy, greedy here? you got to swing with Yorvo. Okay, gladly take five. That gives me a window for sure, especially drawing another huge one here, but... I mean, we get a swing for eight, put him to six. That means just the one Tempest Gen is now lethal next turn. And we're going to have two. Not to mention a surprise Spectral Sailor block. So I told you it all comes down to the play draw. And that seems to be the way it went down in this one. I don't see a way my opponent comes up with 15 damage here. So it basically is uh, nothing because these Tempest Gens are going to get through one way or the other. Shifting Ceratops, very, very, very strong. I do not look forward to playing game three against mono green Shifting Ceratops dot deck. Uh, but uh, that is what it is. Oh, wait, they can give this thing reach. I'm just going to take that damage. I've played a little Shifting Ceratops myself. Glad I caught that one. Uh, they can give that thing reach with that Elvish Mystic to block had we traded... 
this Tempest Gin and relied on the other one to uh, to finish the deed. All right, then on to game number three. I have to say I would have liked it more if we had won game one and been on the play right now. But being on the draw, we'll see what kind of hand we can get. You know, one drop, Curious Obsession, and then Interactive Cards, right? Four Aether Gusts. One drop, Curious Obsession, land, four Aether Gusts. I'm in. I have to say, this is even better. This is even better than that. Amazing. Until, of course, it doesn't work out, but it, our opponent, you know, does literally anything to our Siren Storm Tamer, plays a Hornet Sting, and gets it. Then things maybe not working out so well, but until then, this is the dream. Siren Storm Tamer, turn one. Double Curious Obsession, turn two. My opponent has no one drop. This is good times right here. And of course, Aether Gust is welcome. So as long as we don't get blown out by, you know, say Hornet Sting or anything that deals with our Storm Tamer, we are off to the races. I'm terrified that my opponent's doing nothing here, by the way. Why would they keep this hand? They kept seven, I believe. Yeah. Why would they keep this hand with no one drops and no two drops? I'm not going to put that second Curious Obsession on there. I have no idea what they have. In fact, they could have nothing, but it's just not worth the risk when we're in such an advantageous spot so far. Now I don't even have to play this Storm Tamer. I can just play this Sailor on the instep. I mean, I assume shifting Ceratops were involved. There you go. I didn't even have anything. I guess that is why you work so hard in game two to pick up a win. And, you know, in game one, because sometimes you never know when your opponent's hand just isn't going to work out. And we don't know what they had. But we, we can assume that they didn't get a third land. They probably had some kind of hand that had great sideboard cards or the like. And then just didn't get there. And if you have dorky creatures that don't answer a Siren Storm Tamer with a Curious Obsession on it, you're just going to fall really far behind. And they saw the writing on the wall, I guess, whatever their hand was, uh, the speculative keep, they tanked on the decision. It didn't work out, and we take those. So, whoo! That was kind of a stressful match, despite the anticlimactic inning. But you can see the power of this deck. We put the pressure, even on the draw here in Game 3, we put enough pressure on, on Turn 2, that our opponent just wasn't able to keep up. And even if they have something... Here, I mean, we have all the gas. We've got an Aether Gust. This hand was incredible after sideboarding for this matchup. So there you go, everybody. Mono Blue Tempo taking one down. All right, Mono Blue Tempo here. Pioneer. This looks like... Oh, gosh. Are we on the play or the draw here? We're on the draw. I don't love it on the draw. I'm going to give it a keep. I'm going to give it a chance, though. I'm going to give it a keep here because... Well, we're going to get Thoughtseize. I mean, we're going to find out. I, I mean, because it doesn't necessarily get better, right? We could have a one drop. I'd like to have a one drop. But this hand already sort of has a, an okay mix in that we have two mana to do stuff. So even after getting Thoughtseize here, we're still going to have plenty of spells. I don't love the Unsubstantiate necessarily. Our opponent uh, playing Allurus as their companion here. Something to keep in mind. All right, there's our third land, though. I was going to say, Unsubstantiate is probably much better on the play, but it's also much better when you have a threat to, to protect, and we don't. However, look at this. Our opponent exiling their own Thoughtseize. Wow, that uh, one would assume that was to find a land, which they then did. So, perhaps unfortunate for us. But we do have the Essence Capture up now. Um, I guess we technically have the Unsubstantiate if we want to hit something else. If they were to just pass, I'd consider I'm substantiating the supplier just to then play Narset on my turn. We'll see. The thought. I mean, honestly, sure, right? It's the only way to get anything out of our mana here. <laughs> but frankly, it's a pretty decent... Um, you know, look, I assume they have Fatal Push type cards over there. And I think that Narset can dodge a lot of it. I don't know if Narset's static ability is particularly useful here. And this is 
certainly kind of a different way to look at playing this game, but I think it's okay. You know, I think if we play a Tempest Gin there, and then they kill it on our instep, and then they untap and play a creature, then our Narset's kind of stranded. Yeah, that None of that seems great, right? So now we sort of have to live with whatever they mill here, and it wasn't too bad. Although they did find another land for what I... Okay, an Arcanist. Yep. It is unfortunate that we could not counter that one. But let's see what we can do. Uh, Narsa finds a mystical dispute. Certainly not great here. Well, let's give this a shot. Protection from red. And they have to have revolt to hit it with a fatal push. So this has got a shot. You know, it doesn't die to OK command. Pyromancer, sure. We're all making elemental tokens here. I don't know. This is an interesting game. You know, it's very possible that we... Right, if I was scared of uh, them killing the Tempest Gin, maybe I'm not supposed to play the Master of Waves there, and maybe I was supposed to just jam the Tempest Gin from the beginning, right? I don't know. It's hard to say. We do have plenty of cards now, but specifically Dreadhorde Arcanist scares me uh, in a way that... Yeah, not even the young Pyromancer does, right? I, we could kind of go around to Pyromancer. The value off the Arcanist, though, might be too much. We'll see. They have selected Fatal Push. And Fatal Pushed their own supplier to give themselves Revolt for the Fatal Push in their hand. Okay. Or something like that, anyways. Fair enough. Narset down. Oof. An acclaim the firstborn on a second one. We might be dead here. I don't really see us getting out of this one with a Tempest Chin. Uh, given that they can... Bring back another Fatal Push. All They can also lure us... Although, I guess, you know, well, let's start by opting. How about, no, actually, because I can Tempest Gin plus hold up Essence Capture. I don't know if we can win this game, but Essence Capture might be a start. Unfortunately, we're going to get Thought Seized here. So Essence Capture no longer on the table, but still no Revolt for my opponent. Once I put the Curious Obsession on this thing, it does kill in three swings. And they actually just took the Opt. Interesting. Okay. You know, I was... We gotta keep in mind this, uh, this fame over here. Gosh, it, okay, well, let's see how bad this is. It's, it's gonna be pretty bad. Oh, you know what? It works because they can actually stack the village rights first, then the fatal push. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. We got demolished there on the game too, I guess. Fortunately, we have the Soul Guide Lanterns here. We have the Ether Gusts. These are all good cards against them, I believe. Uh, Entrancing Melody is also kind of good. If you think about it, we can see like a uh, a young Pyromancer, right, for four mana. We have instants and sorceries. We can make some copies. Hmm. Okay. I'm just cutting some stuff here, trying to figure out. I don't... I mean, I do like the Narset in theory, but it's maybe not great here. Unsubstantiate seems pretty easy to cut. All right, let's give this one a shot. I mean, Narset isn't bad. Right, the ability can be very good against them, uh, but it's pretty easy for them to swarm the board, right? So this looks like a keeper to me. Oops, make sure we play a land though. Flash flyers and uh, I guess some counter magic. I mean, this seems pretty reasonable. I certainly have the ability to, you know, hopefully go over the head of our opponent's creatures. 
uh, while while they mess around doing whatever it is they're trying to do, and that's not a not a bad draw either. All right, so we get in there now. We have Ether Gust if we want it. If not, we can play Sailor and Opt, which I think is also pretty strong. I do kind of want to find a third land here. We we would like to cast these spells after all. Uh. And you know what? I can Aether Gust on my turn. So this is fine. Let's opt. Sure. This maximizes damage, so. And actually, especially does so drawing the Siren Storm Tamer. I like this. All right, I'm going to Gust the Pyromancer now. If they put it on top, then all I have to do is find a land to just mind control that thing with this entrancing melody. Or land to uh, Master of Ways for some amount here. So uh, it also turns on, obviously, the Spectral Sailors at that point. So we are kind of poking our way in there, you know, a couple points of damage at a time. <laughs> Things seem fine for us, but the reality is it can turn very, very quickly out of a Black-Red Pyromancer, uh, Arcanist deck, whatever you want to call it. Um... Like this. Village rights, sacking, there's now a Croxa in the graveyard. We really would like to hit a land. Very much so. We did not, but you know what? That, uh, at least it's a beatdown, right? It continues the plan uh, of getting on in here. So there's no Arcanist. Pyromancer is pretty beatable for us, right? As far as two drops go, the 1-1 one -one tokens aren't really preventing much of our air force here. Um, and it's not the kind of overwhelming advantage that the Dreadheart Arcanist can give. Oh gosh. All right. So it's Fatal Push targeting my Tempest Gin in response to the Fatal Push. But after the Pyromancer trigger, Village writes it away. Nicely done. Um, that said, this was, you know, the, my opponent spent two mana here. Only got rid of one of our creatures. Did not significantly progress their board as of yet. We still have a four-turn clock in the air. And uh, a land still gives us this entrancing melody. We're ahead in the damage race for now, at least. Well, uh, that... I mean, that could be worse, right? Hope our opponent doesn't do anything too terrifying here. They have... I mean, I won't lie. Things don't look that great for us, just in the sense that my opponent has all the cards in hand. They do have a board presence. They are swinging for more than we are. Here comes Croxa, though. So being able to hit Croxa with this unsubstantiated is just massive. Massive here. I don't even know that it'll be enough, but it, but it is huge for us. They got no tokens out of that. They got nothing out of that, really. So, and now we hit our land. Uh, they can play Croxa out of hand next turn. We can Entrancing Melody of Pyromancer. Or we can Master of Waves. And then end up losing our Entrancing Melody to Croxa, but having a board that can hopefully swarm our opponent to death. I think that's actually better, I think. Just because taking the Pyromancer now when it, we're, it, you know, like I said, two turns ago it would have been great. Now I think it's a, maybe a little too slow. And even if this Master of Waves doesn't get there, you know, hopefully it'll buy us some time here, right? If we take one more hit of five... We're at six. We've got them at six, so it's just two turns from our Air Force. So this is a pretty good one. Blood Chief's Thirst taking out our Master of Waves. The only good news there for us is that it took their entire turn. And now we'll see. All right, so it's just all about blocking right we have to also be able to discard a card to croxa so that means i get one block take five go to one i do not think we're going to win this game um 
I guess I could steal this Pyromancer, and then I'm still taking five on the swing. Um, and I have the Storm Tamer to pitch. I could also Entrancing Melody a token as a blocker for two mana, then play another Siren Storm Tamer for a second blocker, and have the ability to sack one up to protect me. Spell or ability that targets me or a creature I control being that Croxa ability, maybe that's better. Well, if this ends up being better, it'd be a weird win, but you know what? We take those. This puts our opponent down to three. This was a pretty, this is why I love, one of the reasons why I love a, a deck like this mono blue deck. This is a weird game state decided by one ones and two ones. And yet, uh, here we are. It's completely a, a very exciting game. So do we sacrifice the Storm Tamer to counter the Crocs ability or do I just take the Crocs ability? Go ahead and, uh, oops. Oh, no. Well, you know what? We learned something important here, friends. This ability does not target. This ability hits each opponent. It doesn't change that much. We were still dead. Well, we were always dead to this. <laughs> uh, even if I had kept one in hand, we'd be dead to this. So we were always dead to the double Croxa, unfortunately. Uh, but you know what? At least we got to learn the lesson there. That was an incredible game, though, honestly. I had a lot of fun even in defeat. So that was a great uh, match here with Mono Blue. Hopefully, we'll uh, uh, <laughs> win more than we lose the ones when we get to a position like this. But this was a really fun in-game. This was a fun damage race. These are the kind of games I like to play. Uh, and this is the kind of games this format needs more of. So there you go. Let's move on to the next one. It's more Mono Blue Devotion slash Tempo. It's a keep. This hand looks good to me. We, however, lost yet another dice roll. Not my favorite, but... Uh, we've got plenty of good cards here. As a matter of fact, on the play, it would almost be unfair, am I right? Uh, I'm gonna lead with the Storm Tamer here, just because we know what we're doing. With one mana on this turn, no matter what, we're playing a one drop. Whereas, in future turns, given that we now already have a one drop, we may not want to play that Spectral Sailor, and this leaves us the, the most options, given that the Spectral Sailor, of course, can be played at flash speed, this, the Storm Tamer can only be played on our turn, so it comes out first. And uh, there's a Fatal Push on the Storm Tamer, so checks out. Really wish I had been on the play here. But we'll pass back. All right, three mana. It's a Davriel, huh? I'm fine with this. You want to make me discard cards? I'm actually in. I'll just throw away a uh, Sea Dasher Octopus here. We have one to spare, and I have a Spectral Sailor. So I can actually take out the, uh, the Davriel if I want to. I can also, frankly, ignore the Davriel if I want to, and I kind of do. I kind of just want to put a Curious Obsession on the Spectral Sailor... Well, I'll tell you what. This just needs to attack, not necessarily attack a player. Yeah, it just needs to attack a thing. Yeah, whatever. Let's just hit Davriel here because we can take it out. And now we have an answer for whatever our opponent does, right? If they play a creature, we completely punish them with the essence capture. And if they go for anything else, we have the unsubstantiate. I guess the middle ground here is if they play a Thought Seize, we kind of get hosed. I mean, we're still left with three things we can do. We can Essence Capture, we can Unsubstantiate. Heck, we can even try to mutate onto the Spectral Sailor, although that one feels a bit risky. Um, my opponent took the Unsubstantiate, which most certainly telegraphs a, uh, a removal spell to me over, you know, anything else, right? 
But we'll see, I guess, this is where the answer comes out. Do we connect with the sailor? My opponent gave me every chance to be greedy and put that Sea Dasher Octopus on there, I'll tell you that. Looks like they're going to uh, take the bait, which is, you know, basically card even there with the Curious Obsession, the Fatal Push, so... Uh, that works out, and you know what? Now, this is where we hope that their last two cards are not more good removal spells, and we run out of Tempest Gen. Oh, you know what? This is why we call it Funting Pioneer, people. I believe that we, it would have been a little greedy, I think, but I think we could have actually mutated the Sea Dash or Octopus onto the Fatal, onto the uh, Spectral Sailor, and the Fatal Push, in theory, would have been countered because it would have then been targeting a creature with CMC3. However, that is a risky play because our opponent had two mana open. If they have another removal spell, then we lose our Sea Dasher Octopus as well. And we lose um, our turn, right? And then they untap it in this Hazret and we're completely blown out. So not that we're not, not blown out by uh, Hazret hitting the field at all, but um, that's fine. We'll go ahead and mutate this onto the Tempest Gen. We'll put it under the Tempest Gen. Keep that thing a 4-4. Four, four. Swing on in there and keep open an Essence Capture. I mean, I am frankly terrified of Hazaret. They can just throw away a card and hit us for 7 this turn, but what else are we going to do? Well, discard and take 2. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we might lose to the Hazaret race, right? That's, that is a very real possibility. In the meantime, though, keep in mind, any blocker is good for us, right? So we've got lots of good draws here. That's a pretty bad one. But we're not dead yet, I guess. They have one card in hand. Hazret does seven, puts us to six. Yeah, this feels pretty bad. We need a blocker, but we are going to get two shots at it here. Unsubstantiate probably goes a long way to solving the problem, frankly. Uh, let's see if the Tempest Shin connects. It does. All right. We might have gotten out of the woods on this one, but wow, was it close. And you know what? Playing this Tempest Shin really was kind of the key, so uh, that that um, Sea Dash or Octopus play would have been quite greedy. Oh my, Croxa coming out from my opponent. Pretty strong. Unsubstantiate, though, is simply put going to save the day. Even if they were to have some kind of follow-up removal spell here, I believe this spell pierce catches everything but a fatal push. Good enough. That was a scary one, I'll tell you that much. All right, Black Red. Ether Gusts putting in overtime uh, today, I guess. Although, interestingly, this is kind of a different black-red than the one we played against earlier. Probably still demands some of the same answers, at least. All right, gets us to 62. I cut a spell pierce. I might end up cutting the other one, too. We'll see. I think I just cut the other spell, Pierce. I mean, it's nice to catch, say, a Kologon's Command or, you know, even a Thoughtseize or something like that, but it's definitely the kind of card that's better on the play than the draw, if nothing else, right? And this is a... This is a keep, though. This is a hand. This is a heck of a hand. Now, obviously, you give me one more land, and this hand is the, the actual dream, but even without it, this is a very powerful hand. 
depending on what they do, right? If they thought seize, obviously we'll we'll play the creature we have left on turn one. Um, if they do nothing like this, we uh, get to play Cloudfin Raptor out. Hope that we find some lands here. We get two draw steps. That helps, as a matter of fact. I was going to say, we get two draw steps at a land bef with, without any disruption to our game plan, right? There's that first draw there, and then... Wow, waste not. Uh-oh. Um, fortunately, our creatures fly if we end up having to give them some zombies. This is the other draw step where hitting a land is very good for us, and we did it. Because what that means is that we can now put the Curious Obsession on the Cloudfin Raptor, but also play the Spectral Sailor here. We get to immediately start drawing a card. I mean, this is as good as the one Cloudfin Raptor in the deck can get, so I'm in. We're going to need to find more lands. Frankly, the Waste Knot is a scary card, um, but we'll see what happens. I would not be at all surprised to see you know, fatal pushes in our future, but for now it's Thoughtseize. <coughs> Excuse me. Is this going to be an interesting game? Because getting zombies by making us discard creatures... I mean, it's a win condition, but it's very slow. Getting mana? Pretty good, but gated by how many cards they have in hand, and we have no lands to discard. Getting cards is what you would expect, but then they're still gated by mana, while we have an incredibly threatening creature on board. So, it does take kind of a specific set of cards for our opponent to really get back in it, and honestly, Croxa isn't it. Because I'm just going to pitch the Master of Waves here. My opponent gets a zombie I don't care about. It's interesting they took the Soul Guide Lantern, valuing keeping that Croxa in their graveyard. My goal is to make that Croxa irrelevant. I don't want that card to matter. I just want to attack with creatures and, you know, counter this thing once and never have it hit the battlefield. So, you know, we'll see what we find, though. Triple unsubstantiate. I am going to be greedy and look for a land. Well, that is the only way to get blown out here, isn't it? It's not the land we want. Neither is that. Yuck. All right, well, that's funny. I put that glass pool mimic in, and that is literally the only kind of a circumstance where you can get punished by it, but we did get punished by it. I think it's worth it, right? That is a small corner case uh, scenario there. Otherwise, it's very powerful. You know, copying a Spectral Sailor, copying a Tempest Gin, you know, the, all of these things are very good in the deck, especially this one, which is, again, lighter on creatures, heavier on interaction. It's worth it, I think, to kind of be able to cheat in an extra creature like that. Very rarely does it punish us. In this case, it did. We'll live with the outcome. And the outcome is a K command, forcing us to discard and lose our Sailor. That's not so bad. We do give them a card by pitching the unsubstantiate, but we're still in the game. This one, I cannot, I cannot go for that. I have to just swing. Gosh, give me some land. I'm gonna make a brave play right now, friends. I have no idea if that is correct. I didn't stop to think about it. We just went for it because I think it is. We have the two, three Cloudfin Raptor, but I feel like because we're 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 mana short over here, the longer the game goes on, actually, the more advantageous it is for my opponent because this is sort of the window for them to get back in with, say, something like this. And I think just slamming it down there, it's a good use of two mana. It whatever it's gonna break even here but the point is now we they have enough mana to have multiple removal spells at least now we still have a threat and we can decide exactly what we want to do with that threat and uh i'm gonna take out the liliana i think i mean do i care about each player discarding a card the thing is i kind of don't care about each player discarding a card this turn but, I mean, let's just take out the Planeswalker while we can. We have to keep in mind that Croxa in the graveyard. They're, they're going to have to... Wait a minute. 
I was going to say they're going to have to Field of Ruin to get a second red source. The reality is, Field of Ruin requires a non-basic land and opponent controls to activate. That means they're stranded on a second red mana right now, and as of this moment, they cannot escape that Croxa, even if they get the cards in the graveyard. A second Waste Knot. A third Waste Knot. Well, now those zombies might matter, but unfortunately for our opponent... I mean, they are out of cards. Um, interesting, unsubstantiate spell or creature. It is not non -land, spell or non-land permanent like I... Uh, I'm not going to say I thought it was, but I kind of thought it was. <laughs> uh, all right, there's a Soul Guide Lantern, though. That will clear up our problems. Frankly, that might lead to our opponent scooping, but we'll see. They get a lot of Waste Knot triggers if they come up with something good. So uh, there's a land, though. That's great for us. Pinpoint, hit that Croxa. Yeah, now we just get to pass the turn back with the world at our fingertips. Double and substantiate, essence capture, ether gust. And you know what? The first one looks free to me to go ahead and hit with the essence capture. Pretty big to keep us... I mean, they would have got a lot of zombies out of that. That, I mean, let's see here. We're going to 12. They would, would have given them a two-turn clock. I mean, those zombies could have made a, a, a real difference. I'm going to go ahead and pop this thing, though. To... I'm not going to do anything with it yet. Is the answer. I'm just going to see what we hit. Another Essence Capture. I mean, this game seems pretty straightforward here, especially now with four mana. All we have to do is pass the turn, um, you know, counter whatever our opponent does, and win the game. So as long as it's not something like a Thought Seize, which I think would actually be pretty annoying, we'll be okay. I kind of wish I could bounce something to their hand right now. Actually make them lose more to that thing. Does that change math? Probably not. I guess the thought sees itself would change the math. But this should be enough for the scoop. Oh, wow. Look at that. Fatal push. Well, is this where we make the play? I mean, this is... This is this is actually truly it too. Because my opponent has enough mana to fatal push over and over again if I unsubstantiate. If the Croxa lands and goes away, they have revolt, but you know what they don't have right now? It's revolt on the spectral sailor. Fatal push. The C dash or octopus is gonna come in. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it over top, and this is exactly what we called. Our opponent thought they were gonna be able to activate their field of ruin and get to the revolt trigger. They're not. Now the essence capture. This is insane. The Essence Capture hits the Croxa. It goes to the Graveyard. Well, they've got a Chup Blocker, right? Well, no, this thing still flies, even though it's underneath. And we have the cards anyway, so that will do it. We took down all the Black Red decks today, I guess, anyways. Oh, my opponent, you know what? I am going to talk about this for a second before we log off today. Um... I'm not going to go do a, 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 an overview of the deck um, because, you know, these mono blue decks, it's kind of to see how it matches up against the new cards. And the new cards are Croxa. We got to find out tonight. Um, my opponent said, thanks for making Pioneer content. It's, it's hard to find. If I'm being completely honest, it's hard to make. Um, almost nobody plays the format on Magic Online anymore. It takes me a long time to find matches. Um, 
And you know, look, I wish I could give you all the highest quality matches ever in the world, but it's hard to just find matches, especially when we're trying to play some brews that, you know, we don't want to just get stomped by the same, you know, tier one deck if we if we try to do the league. So, um, you know, I, I try to mix up league matches and queues. And frankly, when it comes to modern, you take any match you can get. I'm sorry, when it comes to Pioneer, you take any match you can get. So um, I'm happy to continue making Pioneer content. I really liked this format when it started. I loved the concept of it. Frankly, I really enjoy Historic now. Um, Pioneer has just kind of floundered in the COVID world and the stagnant meta. I think that in a post-COVID world, we'll see some, you know, revitalization or something of Pioneer. So I certainly hope so. But in the meantime, I will do my best to continue to find cool decks or at least take some spins on some fun ones that I enjoy like this and see if we can have some fun in this Pioneer world. Everybody, thank you as always for watching so much. I'm Corbin Hostler. You can find me here every week on Thursday, Cool Stuff's YouTube channel on Twitter at Chosler, C-H-O-S-L-E-R. Um, my podcast is Brainstorm Brewery, and uh, I appreciate all the support, everybody. Pioneer is a fun format, and we're going to keep making content for it as long as we can. See you next week.